the Spring Bar Skyliner or the Spring Bar Classic Jack 140. Made in USA or imported. $2,100 or $1,200. bucks. you are up and get outside. There are a lot of things that are the same about these two tents. They're both of a similar structural design. The classic spring bar design that was engineered in the 1960s. Now these are not freestanding tents. They must be staked in. They're both easy to set up and can be done in about 10 minutes. They uh, both have eight and a half ounce canvas walls and 10 ounce canvas roofs. Both have a 12 ounce polyvinyl floor that is almost like a rubber raft material. Very durable, very rugged, and waterproof. Both of these tents are 10 foot by 14 foot on the floor, so they have the same area. However, one feels larger. Both tents also have this, what I think is a brilliant design at the hem, where the floor meets the wall. Now, instead of just coming in at a 90 degree angle like most tents, this hem is about an inch and a half wide. And inside of there, there is a rope. And that rope is what the stake loops grab onto. Now these are nice metal stake loops. And what that design does is it brings that wall outward and sheds water away from the tent. So it's simple, but brilliant. But that's about where the similarities end. Now let's talk about some of the differences. The Spring Bar Skyliner is designed to be much more wind resistant and weather resistant. It's more versatile. You can use it in more winter camping and inclement weather conditions. And here's a few reasons why. For starters, it has more stakes around the base. There are 19 stakes that hold down the floor of the tent on the Skyliner. There are 15 on the Classic Jack. The stakes themselves are also very different. This is a stake for the Skyliner. This is a stake for the Classic Jack. This is a simple kind of nail design, round. It is made of galvanized steel, but once it's driven in the ground, it can get a little loosey-goosey. It might come out, you have to be sure to get it in at an angle, and I found especially when snow camping, you kind of have to bury it in snow to get it to really grab. This wedge design is brilliant. It's also made in the USA by one of Spring Bar's suppliers in Missouri. But the wedge design just holds so much better in any kind of ground. I had this in sand and it was still solid in 40 mile an hour winds. Honestly, the Skyliner stakes are the best tent stakes I've ever seen. When it comes to the poles, the Classic Jack uses galvanized steel poles. Now on the awnings and on the side poles, they are adjustable, which is very nice especially on the awning so you can raise it or lower it. But it also lets you get the proper tension you need for the conditions on the side poles. On this classic jack pole, it's actually in three sections, but right here at this joint, there's a cable that keeps this part linked together. That is a separate piece that comes out, all galvanized steel. On the Skyliner, however, you have aluminum poles, also adjustable on the side poles as well as the awning. And the aluminum has some steel reinforcements in key areas like the upper part of the side rods and also along the roof or ridge pole. That's just another example of how Spring Bar added a lot of thoughtful design elements to make the Skyliner more rugged and more robust. And as we all know, aluminum is more corrosion resistant than even galvanized steel. By and large, the poles on the, on the Skyliner are also a larger diameter than on the Classic Jack, especially when it comes to these spring bars or the flexible steel rods that give the roof its structure. They are both galvanized steel in this case, but on the Classic Jack, it is a smaller diameter than on the Skyliner, which also has the job of keeping a larger roof upright and supported. However, there is an extra, almost like a double wrapped pipe or tube all the way across as that ridge pull on the Skyliner, a bit more robust than on the Classic Jack. When it comes to the awnings, they are a little bit different on each as well. The guy lines that are provided with each tent are slightly different. On the Skyliner, you have this twisted rope and a wood, whatever you call that, a wood clasper. On the Classic Jack, you also have a wood thingamajigger as well, but then a polyester rope. They both have these grommets at the end that make it easy to attach to the top of the awning pole or to a stake if you wish to do it in reverse order. The biggest difference between these two awnings is the size and the utility of them. On the Skyliner, it's a smaller awning. It's more of a trapezoid shape instead of square. It does not come out as far, 
but it has this grommet in the center that allows you in rainy conditions, which I did it this way a couple of weeks ago when I camped with this in the rain, you can put one of the awning poles right here and then guy each corner out without a pole, bringing it down. It gives you an A shape. The water sheds off nicely. One of the biggest problems with these awnings in the rain is that water will easily pool up here. That can stretch the material or deform it over time. That is going to happen on the classic jack but it is avoidable on the Skyliner. The classic jack awning is simply larger. It comes out about six feet from the tent wall, which is great for shade in the summer, but it's really not as useful for rain. In fact, when I've been in snow and rain with it, I've just rolled that awning up so that it's not flapping around or causing me issues because it's really not helping. You do, however, have the option on the classic jack awning to add these side panels as an accessory if you want that zip right on there. That can be purchased separately. Both of them will roll up and tie back against the wall, which is handy. But the biggest upgrade to the Skyliner when it comes to awnings is also this rear awning. This comes out over the windows, so it provides additional shade in the summer, even if you have those windows open, keeps it cooler inside. But it's especially useful in the rain where you can have this out if you're hot tenting and you have a fire inside and you want some ventilation, you can still crack the windows. And even if it's raining or snowing, it's not gonna get inside. I had that very experience myself. It's a small but very useful awning. But perhaps one of the most useful features on the Skyliner that does not exist on the Classic Jack. So you take the awning pole, you attach it here, you can Velcro it to the side wall here, and you can use your guy lines to guy that whole entire wall out. And that just adds a lot more rigidity to that sidewall, especially if you're in really windy conditions. The same functionality exists on the front, but on both sides of the door. I find that to be a, a brilliant feature that again makes it more robust in more weather conditions. One of the other features I really like about both of these tents is the door design. A couple of differences are on the classic jack, you actually have a bottom zipper on both the interior mesh panel and the exterior solid panel wall. Whereas on the Skyliner, you have the two doors still, a solid panel and a mesh panel. This mesh is actually all made in the USA as well, by the way. But there's no bottom zipper on the outer panel, only on the internal mesh panel. Now one other clever little thing on the Skyliner that does not exist on the Classic Jack is you have a double zipper, so you can zip from the top peekaboo, pass things through, whatever you need to do. Also a nice big threshold to help keep the dirt out, but perhaps the coolest thing here is you get your patch that shows it's made right there in Salt Lake City, Utah, USA, and you even know exactly who sewed your tent, who inspected it, and when. But the biggest difference between the two doors is the size. On the Classic Jack, it's just over 36 inches wide, seam to seam. That's totally adequate, but the Skyliner's awesome. Check this out. Almost 53 inches seam to seam. The reason that big door is so nice is because it's so easy to move things in and out, even a big thing like a cot or a chair. The Skyliner uses YKK zippers. The Classic Jack uses SBS. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. They're essentially a Chinese equivalent of yeah, YKK, but you know, we like the YKKs around here. Now let's take a look around inside. Here in the Classic Jack, it is nice and spacious, as you can see. I really love the light canvas color of this. It's so bright in here. On sunny days, you get a lot of ambient light, it stays relatively cool in the summer, and on winter days, it's great to have all that light as well. You also have great ventilation. My favorite window of all is this big picture window in the back that I can't even get in the whole frame of my camera. Much better use, in my opinion, than a second door. And on this end, right now we have the hot tent installed, but that in the summer or when you're not using a tent stove, that would be another triangular window. Compare that to the windows in the Skyliner. You have these two big windows that combined are at least as big as the one in the Classic Jack, and it gives you a little more versatility, I guess, with two. And then where the tent stove is installed right now, if you didn't have it in there, there is a window panel to have a little screen window there also. No ventilation up top, but the windows do a fine job in my opinion. As far as features and accessories go in the Skyliner, you get these organizers that hang on the walls. Now they can be configured in one of two ways. There's two of these that come this way, pockets like so, or hung up on the other side vertically. But what I think is really brilliant is this new loft system they created. 
you have these triangular mesh panels on either end, and this is all one piece. And then in the middle, you have just this canvas cord. That could be used to hang your wet socks or to hang a lantern at night, something lightweight, some lighting. And what I really like is, as a relatively tall guy, it's not as cumbersome as some of those that have the mesh loft all the way across, like the classic jack, which is fine. I didn't really think that was a problem, but I really like this design. When you come first in the door, it just doesn't get in your way as much and you can move about. And while we're on that note, you ought to notice I am six foot one and I have a hat that adds another inch or two and I have plenty of headroom in here. The organizer is attached to these nice metal O-rings attached with this canvas ribbon. However, you do not have any built-in mesh pockets. Now back in the classic jack, now if I tied up these windows how I should, you could see we have these built-in mesh pockets. They're quite handy. My kids like to stick their books or their flashlights in there. There's even one down low below the big window for your floor sleepers would be especially handy. You also have some metal O-rings. It's a little bit different positions. There's none lower down like there are in the Skyliner. They're all up top, but you have a few additional ones up here. And then it comes with this big mesh loft. Now that will span across the entire roof of the tent, which is nice if you're throwing up lightweight things, but I really like putting it up in this kind of sling formation. If you do it this way, even if you're using the tent stove, it's not too close to melt or anything. And I found that a great spot to put your wet gloves or, or things like that that you want to dry out at night. And th this is a, an included accessory with the Classic Jack. A little feature that both of these tents have is just a little zipper port where you can run a cord. Now, both of these tents are very spacious and very comfortable. But the biggest difference and one of the largest improvements on the Skyliner is the volume. They say it's about 30% larger in volume than the Classic Jack. And that's because it's got a wider, larger roof that makes more vertical walls. They're not straight up vertical, but they're getting pretty darn close to what you see in a wall tent. So you just are able to move around so much more. You can just walk across this whole tent. I'm measuring wall to wall where the roof hits the walls. And that is about 87 inches, 88 inches. And lengthwise at the top, I'm solo, I don't have anybody to hold the other end, so it's almost 11 feet. But you can really feel the volume in here, and that's awesome. Compared to the Classic Jack, I am measuring 64 inches wall to wall. That's almost two feet wider that you have in the, the Skyliner. That makes a big difference. I can still move around here comfortably, but you do run into that wall a lot sooner. I also notice when we're using cots, you have to pull them out farther from the wall in this tent than you do in the Skyliner tent. Lengthwise, I'm just, I'm about nine and a half feet. So it's almost, it's at least a foot and a half or so longer as well. That means the, the side walls don't have as steep of a slope and it's just a, uh, it's just a larger tent in the Skyliner. It's the first time I measured it to figure that out for real, but you can definitely feel it. I can tell you that. So that's a big bonus. You're paying for a more comfortable tent. So this is how we typically have it with my family. We are a family of five. So mom and dad go on the cots. We like to put them in the corner like that. We just find it doesn't crowd up the rest of the space. We love the cots because you have lots of room underneath to store gear. Then we got the kids on the floor. Now, we're not actually camping. I just set this up to show you. We do give them pads. We like them mostly. Uh, that's how they usually lay out. We might put our dog in the corner or he might sleep up here or right in the middle of the kids. And that gives us plenty of room on the other side for either the hot tent setup as we have it now or just gear. You can get up to eight people in this tent and it'd be okay. You could do it. It's a little snug, but it could be done if there's not much or any gear in here. You can comfortably do four to six people. And with just two people, it's luxurious. I mean, it's almost like a little hotel room. So that's sort of the limit. As a matter of fact, if you're trying to figure out exactly what size tent you need, then you ought to go check out an article on our website where we kind of, we made a chart and did a full breakdown of what we recommend. Link in description. Now the workmanship on these tents is exquisite. On the Sp Skyliner, I mean, when you look at the stitching, there's not a single flaw. All of this is cut and sewn in Salt Lake City, Utah in their factory there by skilled workers, American made. That's a pretty cool thing. That said, Asia has a lot of skilled workers too, and this is excellent quality also. You're, there's a different style. Now I'm not, I don't know a whole lot about industrial sewing, but I can tell that the seams on the Skyliner are more robust than this. There's more thread involved. They're just, as, it appears to me to be a stronger stitching. However, you still have great quality here. 
You have reinforcements in corners where there's a lot of tension down below as well. Same in both tents. Finally, let's talk about the biggest feature of these tents that make them different, not only from other spring bar tents, but also from their competitors out there. And that is that it is hot tent ready, wood stove compatible. Right now in the Skyliner, I have the Winterwell Nomad View installed. This is the large size. The big advantage of doing a hot tent out of a canvas tent like this is you're not voiding any factory warranties because you're cutting a hole in the roof or doing some DIY solution that's kind of half-baked. This is gonna last forever and it works and it's just easy because you buy the whole kit and it's ready to go. One thing that's clever on the Skyliner tent too is this canvas panel behind here is actually a 12 ounce canvas. So it's thicker, heavier duty than the walls or the roof and it is fire retardant treated. So it just gives you a little bit of added peace of mind. And that's why this panel can be so small. You notice I also have a fireproof mat down there from Winterwell. That helps protect your vinyl floors. That mat is a must have if you're gonna use this as a hot tent. So this is what it looks like on the outside on the Skyliner. When you're not using it, you can roll down this solid panel over top. And they also have these attachments from the pole to the wall to kind of keep that wall taut so it's not bowing into your stove inside. Compare that to the Classic Jack. Right now I have the Winterwell Woodlander medium size in here. I did not put the fire mat down here, but I certainly would if I were camping. Make sure you absolutely have that. I really like this stove. I think this one just looks cool. As a matter of fact, if you're interested in learning more about those stoves, both the Woodlander and the Nomad, I did a full video that compares the two. Not only Woodlander versus Nomad, but large versus medium, and which one you need or would like for a tent like this. Spoiler alert, both of them work fine for this size of tent but the large size does burn longer and means you don't have to stoke it as much at night. A big difference here is because that panel of canvas is not treated like in the Skyliner, you have this big gray fire resistant panel there. On the outside, you can see that fire resistant panel. Going in closer, you have the same flange and that's the same flange whether it's a large size or medium size. The, the baffled pipe is the same diameter coming out so you don't have to get different flanges if you have different stoves. So the hot tent system works almost the same in both. You could e use either stove, model, either size. Finally, we have the bags right here. Now this is the tent bag just for the Skyliner. Durable PVC bottom. You carry it around like this. I really like this, the Classic Jack bag. Although it doesn't have that PVC bottom, it has lots of grab handles. So it's really easy to pull in and out of the truck. It's easy to get the tents in the, either one of these. This is the pull bag for the Skyliner. The pull bag for the Classic Jack, it has a zipper. So that's kind of nice and handy and has these handles that make it easy to carry around. And I already noticed one of the ste seams started coming undone. So maybe not quite as durable, but you know, big deal. I could patch that up if I want. Then lastly, the stake bags. Very simple canvas bag with a tied drawstring for the stakes on the Classic Jack. Whereas you got this nice little tote here for the Skyliner. And then you have with the Skyliner, this little pouch as well for those organizing panels, accessories that you hang on the wall. By and large, these are both great tents. So what do you really get for $900 more on the Skyliner? Well, you get a more versatile tent that it's going to be better in worse weather conditions. So a true four season tent, it's gonna hold up better in the wind, the snow, the rain, etc. You also get a piece of outdoor gear that was made in America. That's a rare thing and that's pretty cool. I would say overall, the quality is a notch above, the materials are a notch above, there's just a bit more robustness and durability to every little element. It's more spacious and comfortable, you really feel that volume inside. And at the end of the day, if money was no object and I picked one or the other, I'm gonna go with that Skyliner. Both of these are awesome because they are hot tent ready and like my wife said the last time we went camping, I don't think I can ever go back to camping the way we used to. Well, that's all she wrote, bub. If you wanna learn more about either of these tents, I did a detailed review on either one individually, and you might get even more insight. Let's go camping.